Hello. Last week we learned how to estimate the probability mass function by calculating a histogram. In the last video, meanwhile, we introduced Alice and Bob and talked about how Alice, or Bob for that matter, must make her research reproducible by characterising the distribution of results that she obtained. I mention Alice and Bob again because let's suppose that Alice and Bob estimated the probability mass function for a random variable by computing a histogram. Alice's result might have looked something like this, while Bob's result might have looked something like this. Once again, there is a problem when it comes to comparing Alice's results with those of Bob's. The estimated distributions that they have obtained look similar, but they are not exactly the same. There is some randomness involved when we generate a histogram, however. In particular, the height of the bars in, of each of the bars in the histogram is a random variable. We thus cannot know if the differences between Alice's results and Bob's results are a consequence of real differences in their experiments or randomness. As they did for the sample means, Alice and Bob can resolve this problem by resampling. To resample a histogram, you proceed much as you did when you were writing code to resample the sample mean. You thus start by writing a function that encapsulates all the code for estimating a histogram, just like you started the process of generating resamples of the sample mean by writing a function to calculate the sample mean. The function for generating histogram estimates is shown here and is called gen histogram. This function takes two arguments. n bins is the number of bins to use for the histogram. I've assumed here that the random variable takes a value between 0 and n bins minus 1, which may or may not be true in your case. n samples, meanwhile, is the other argument and this is the number of samples of the random variable that we are going to use to generate our estimate of our histogram. I have called the function that generates the random variable discrete underscore rv. This function could generate any of the types of discrete random variable that we have seen in this course. In other words, it could generate Bernoulli, binomial, geometric, negative binomial, uniform discrete, and, and all these different types of random variable. The surroundings for what I am doing here would largely be the same in all these cases. As we have seen previously, when we calculate a histogram, we use a NumPy array, which in this case is called histo, to count how often each result appears when we generate n samples random variables, as shown here. Once we have generated all our random variables, we then normalize the estimate for the probability mass function that is stored in the array called histo, as shown here. It is this numpy array containing the estimates for each element of the probability mass function that is then returned from our function. In other words, we return an array of values here rather than a single number. Having written this function to generate a single estimate of the histogram, we can run it multiple times in order to generate multiple estimates of the histogram, i.e. our resamples. Notice, however, that we get an array of numbers each time we run the gen histogram function here. This is in contrast to when we wrote the code to resample our sample mean, where the function returned a single random variable. As we return an array each time, we need to store all of our resamples in a two-dimensional numpy array. This two-dimensional numpy array, in this case, is called histosamples.
We can visualize the contents of this two-dimensional NumPy array called histosamples by drawing a diagram as shown here. The two-dimensional NumPy array can be thought of as a table. The numbers in the first row of the table are the end bins result from our first experiment. The second row of the table contains the end bins result from our second experiment. The third row of this table contains the end bins results from our third experiment. The fourth row the end bins result from the fourth experiment. And last but not least, the fifth row contains the end bins result from our fifth experiment. The first column then contains the estimates of the frequency of the first outcome for all n samples experiments. The second column contains the estimates of the frequency of the second outcome of the random variable for all the n samples experiments. And the third column contains the frequencies of the third outcome of the random variable for all n samples experiments. This cell thus contains the estimate of the frequency of the first outcome that was obtained from the first experiment. This cell contains the estimate for the frequency of the second outcome that was obtained in the third experiment. This cell contains the estimate for the frequency of the third outcome that was obtained from the fifth experiment. We can continue this process ad infinitum, but we need to remember, of course, that in Python, zero is used to represent the first outcome, one is used to represent the second outcome, and so on. With that understanding of this array in place, let's go back to the code that we had before. This first line here sets up histo samples so that it can tow the results from the hundred experiments that we will perform. In each of these experiments, we are generating 10 random variables, as our random variable can take 10 possible different values. The estimates for the histograms for the 100 experiments are generated by the second line, the line containing the for loop. We are setting the ith row of the table here equal to the 1D numpy array that is output by the function called genhisto. By writing a colon here in the second element, we set the whole row of the two-dimensional array at once. Once these commands have executed, we thus have 100 estimates in the 2D numpy array called histosamples for the probabilities of getting the various random variable values. The code that is shown here demonstrates how we can extract a median from these various samples. Notice here that the multiple estimates for each of the probabilities are contained in the columns of the numpy array. The command here is thus extracting a 1D numpy array to pass to the NP median function by taking each of the columns in histosamples in turn. As we have covered at length, however, we don't simply want to calculate a single number. Instead, we want to characterize the distribution that each of these estimates of the probability are sampled from. We can thus use the NP percentile function in addition to the NP median function as shown here. The net result is that we say that 45% of our samples fall between the values in lower and lower plus median, while 45% of the samples fall between median, the values in the array median, and median plus upper. We calculate the lower and upper arrays in this way because then we can use the command shown here to draw error bars around the median. The command in question is the one in bold, plt error bar. This command 
draws dots at the pairs of values in x vowels and median. Vertical lines are then drawn from median minus lower up to median plus upper. The net result is that we get a histogram that looks something like this. The degree of randomness that we get when we repeat the experiment multiple times is illustrated by the black lines that for, lie at the top of each of the bars. A fellow researcher can thus determine whether the difference between his or her experiment falls within this range and whether or not they have thus reproduced the results we have observed. I hope that is reasonably clear. The exercise that follows will give you an opportunity to try this out for yourself. Give it a go and as always, ask for help if you are struggling. Good luck.